Well, people like the concept of Q&A, but the actual... <laughs> Was a question for Michael. We got one here, Tina. Huh? Hi, Michael. Hi, Zach. Um, I just wanted to know, I know you said it doesn't matter that much, but I have been curious. What is your favorite color and typeface? Um... That, that, I mean, like, this changes all the time, but um, I, I really, I, like, I come from the school, I think it's a quote by Ivan Shermayev, which is, uh, uh, when in doubt, make it big, if still in doubt, make it red. And he designed that big red nine up on 57th Street, that is proof that that's a good idea. So I like, you know, I like red, I guess. And, um, and you know, um, there are a couple typefaces that sort of tell you how they want you to tell you what they want you to do with them. And I think that, you know, Helvetica or Neuhaus Grotesque, as we call it now, is one of those. And I don't think I'd want to do that for the rest of my life. And I need either the color nor the typeface, but they both feel like old friends to me in a way that could represent both um, comfort and a crutch as or comfort and a, a trap, let's say, not a crutch. And so I think Growing and learning has to do with both identifying the things you're comfortable with and figuring out how you can kind of sidestep those things and move on to the new thing. So, yeah. Hi, uh, quick question. If you were starting from scratch today, nobody knew who you were, how would you find those good, smart, fun clients? Oh, it, uh, you know, all the, like that stuff that we were doing back in the 70s and 80s, there was no internet, there was no nothing. I don't even know how any, I don't know who I knew who Massimo Vignelli was. I don't, I don't, I can't figure out how I knew anything at all back then. Uh, and so I think that, um, you know, for one thing, I don't think um, uh, some of my favorite clients, I don't think are necessarily like, I think there's this idea that if you find a good client, what they are is a patron who encourages you to do good work. And I sort of, I don't need that. I just need someone who sort of has a problem to solve. Massimo used to say, you know, we're like doctors. You know, people come to us and they tell us what hurts and we tell them what, um, you know, what we think the cure is. And he says, some designers, they stay, you know, they, they go back in the pharmacy and they say, what color pill do you like? And the client doesn't know what color pill they want. They just say it hurts here, you know, and they want to, they want whatever will cure that. And so I just need, to me, I don't need people who are kind of, I just need people who have really interesting ailments, <laughs> sort of, you know, and who can describe their symptoms. And I'm like, I've never seen this before, but I think I know what will work. And boy, if you can figure out what will work, that makes me really, really happy. So there, right around you is some problem that needs to be solved. That's what you could look for as opposed to, uh, and then eventually if you put, if you do that good work, someone will see that and say, whoever did that looks like they're a pretty good uh, diagnostician and I could use their help. So that's, that's my advice. Hey, Michael, over here. Yeah, hi. Hey, nice to meet you. So how did you get Verizon to sign off on the Helvetica with the red check? They thought it was garbage, right? No, they, like, what was the tack that you used? It's not, no, no, yeah, that, that was that was Joe from the internet thought it was garbage. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, now it's other. So um, I think that um, uh, like any client, if you're doing that kind of major change, um, what they did think was, boy, this is going to be complicated. We have all this stuff with the old logo. We have to kind of make a commitment to change to the new logo. And I remember the way I, I mean, we had a really great, um, smart advocate there, their head of marketing, Diego Scotti. And he came to me and said, I'm not sure I want to change the logo. I just want to do a study to see what, you know, if we changed it, what might it change to? And I said, I like that way of thinking. We're just going to go experiment. So that was one of the experiments we did. We didn't, you know, and I didn't say, unless you change it to this, you know, I'm going to be angry. And I didn't, I didn't even sell it that hard. We both agreed that the logo they had at that point really wasn't working. It sort of had lots of lots, lots of different, you know, some people thought it was actually ugly, but I think that's a matter of opinion. Um, what it was, was very dysfunctional in terms of how it was, op how it was operationalized in a way. And so I said, what you really need is something that is, you know, you're not looking for surprise or amusement from a wireless provider. You just want something that looks strong, simple, and reliable, right? And so your current logo, if, if anyone remembers the old logo, it sort of had, it was Helvetica and sort of had some check marky sort of thing in it. And I said, I think this is supposed to be a check mark, which is a cool thing to own. This is Helvetica, except it's got all this jazz happening with it. What if we just kind of, kind of shook it out and played it straight and just kind of like presented a find of like a nice, happy, but straight, clean complexion of the world. And uh, 
um, that was one of the outcomes of that experiment. And they showed it, he showed it around uh, to leadership and they said, let's do this thing. And then we were off. So but what's, it's, I, mean, I, I don't try to sell people things they don't want. I always feel like, you know, if, um, if you've got, if, if you're like really sick and you prefer to just keep throwing up instead of taking the pill that I've got, you know, people, I, I'm not going to criticize your hobbies, you know? So, uh, um, so, you know, it's, I think it's always up to the client to kind of do the right thing. We just have to make the case. Uh, we have to explain to them why we think it's the right thing and hope that that logic will be compelling in and of itself. Well, yep. Hi, uh, I'm Mars. Um, uh, so I never got to go to portfolio school or design school, like went to kind of a shitty public university in the Midwest, but I love learning yeah. and I love students and I'm leading a workshop for high school students later this month to help them discover like their interest in like the creative fields and advertising. What advice do you think I should give like a hundred teenagers who kind of just don't know what they want to do? <coughs> um, that's a great question. And I went to a public high school, a public university in the Midwest that uh, I managed to get, a, I think, a good education at. But um, for years, when my kids were looking for colleges, it wasn't even any, it wasn't in, it wasn't listed in their book of 500 top colleges and universities. Dad, where did you go? It's not in this book. Okay, so. <coughs> um, good question. And so, I mean, I, I actually think you could short circuit the laborious beginning of my story. And just say, look, there's this stuff all around you which is having an impact on culture. And for them, it might be, you know, it could be, you know, um, it could be a fashion logo. It could be an Instagram meme. It could be, um, you know, uh, you know, a sticker. It could be, you know, it could be all, it could be, you know, we're surrounded. Like, it's funny, graphic design is, we've become such a visual culture compared to the way it was, say, 50 years ago, where we navigate with emojis, we navigate with iconography, that I think actually just sort of like saying, you know, design, what's, what would your personal icon be? What would it look like if you were an app button on your phone? How would you launch you, you know? I mean, to me, it's just, just give them a nice open thing that would let them do that with like, um, you know, low requirement, where there's no big requirement of being able to master you know, drawing tools or anything else, but just something where it makes them think about how do I translate an idea into a visual expression? Something like that would actually be a fun thing, I think. I would have loved that back in the day. 